Hey, hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today, I'm joined by Wizard, and we're going to be talking turrets. Now, turrets in Space Engineers are, are fundamentally a, a little bit crazy. But if you know how to set them up correctly, you use the center of mass, you protect them, and you feed them properly, then they can be very effective in combat. So, Wizard, what have we seen from our time on the servers when it comes to servers? Good designs, bad designs? Maybe start with your turret as an example of the three factors, and then we'll work our way back to some more of the problematic ones. Um, well, this one took a little bit of time to finalize, but the general basic principle behind this is to have a functioning turret and do as much damage as possible but more importantly is a super smooth and easy to control so you can really get those tight shots in from a distance without losing your target mm -hmm. so like we said before the key elements of this are are you able to feed it from the base of your creation so there's a nice connection point yeah going up. there is no cargo containers in here everything is fed from the grid that it's attached to so potentially it's got unlimited ammunition Okay, uh, so cameras so it can see and it's got decent armament so that it can take a hit as well as dishing it out mm -hmm. right so let's move on to our first of many broken turret designs we see now the first one we see i.e the limp sort of turret design if we remote control into the thing let's uh, find it out and we hit control right we have got some basic function to it but as soon as i access the camera now i am all over the place this thing is so front heavy I can't even track Wizard without it dipping, and I'd, my bullets would be going all over the place. It is absolutely horrible. So how do we fix this then, Wizard? Um, change the center of mass it would be a good start. Okay, so we jump into the menu. The first thing we need to do is, of course, turn our center of mass on, so you can see it turning off. And as Wizard recommended before, having a dark night like this makes it even easier to see. So let's add some mass blocks. Now, why wouldn't we want to add space balls, Wizard? Uh, space balls or mass blocks on a planet, they're fine. They're, they're default, they're very heavy. So they're really good on a planet and it doesn't change regardless whether you turn them on or off. So they're really good blocks to use. So as, as Wizard quickly said, we'll quickly demonstrate it now. Do you want to get in the control panel? Um, I'm going yeah. to add a space ball to the end of here. It has now tipped the mass to the rear. But this space ball here can be changed. So if we grab onto that it. before it flies away, are you changing the mass of that space ball? Nope. It's right. currently set at 100 kilograms. Okay, so just shift that to the opposite end of the spectrum. And if it, if it worked on planets, we'd expect to see the center of mass actually change at this point and be adjustable. But as it's you can see, five, it's five tons now. Okay, and there's no difference nope. in that ball. So let's pop this off like so and now the mass or the center of mass is pretty much in the center and we can fix the rest by using breaking torque can't we was it yep but already just with that little fix if i go into remote control and i control this guy i can already aim this far better than i could before if wizard moves around so i can track him far better much more stable yes there's still a slight pull to the ground but i could still get a lot of accurate shots without even going to the next level so the next stage is make sure the rotors are off, correct? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna go into our inventory. We're gonna connect back up to it. We'll have to connect up through the control panel, I think, here, won't we? Remote control. Let's check the rotors. Um, all the turning action comes from the gyros that are on this thing. So mm -hmm. the remote control block is controlling the gyros and that gives you your movement. So we're looking here for, we we could technically do this together. You could remote control the turret and I could change the braking torque until we find the sweet spot. Do you want to do that? Yeah, sure. All right, so I will go into the menu and we'll just have the turret in the background. I will grab the rotors. So I'll grab the top rotor. That's going to be the key one. And then I've got my braking torque here set to the middle. So have you got remote control of it? Nope, not yet. All right, let us know when it is. It's the 2.0 two Summit 1. Apparently it's not broadcasting. It's not broadcasting? Oh, great. Is that because I'm in it, perhaps? Messing with it? Possibly. All right, so we'll just have to do this manually. So currently it's set to halfway. Let's throw the braking torque up to three quarters. Like about so. And then we'll grab into... Oh, we'll grab inside it. We'll grab the remote control block again. And we'll control it. So now, as you can see, we can move it to a point and it's still... 
So in theory, I can come and find Wizard here and just lock onto him. There's still a little bit of gyroscopic sensitivity left and right, but I can leave the camera there like so. So if I actually go to my F8, bring my camera over, it it's pretty sits. Good it's not too yeah. bad. It's pretty much sitting at that point. It's moving ever so slightly, but this is what you want from a turret, ideally. But there's still a lot of factors here we need to work on. We've not got any good protection. We've not got this thing piped up. So we'll continue on and have a look at that now. So let's go over to the next turret design. Now, this is a more, a more balanced design because what they've actually done is spread the weight right over the center point, haven't they? Yeah, it's, it looks a little bit front heavy, but it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. So this could be fixed once again using the same system with the, the little bit of braking on the rotors, but we haven't got any piping up from the bottom. So I think what we should do is we should head over to this next little base. We'll set another base down for ourselves here, like so, and we'll show how to do some piping. So for this final part, what we're going to attempt to do is build a nice plumbing system for our turret. Now, it's all fine and dandy with the turret design over here if you just want to feed in the ammunition into the guns themselves, but it isn't very efficient. So what we're going to try and do here is build the plumbing system up to the top. So the first thing we're going to need is an advanced rotor. With that advanced rotor attached and wizard's nice guidance from above, we're going to get rid of that advanced rotor head. Instead, we're going to put a small rotor adapter in place. So let's have a quick look here, and we're going to add the small head onto there. Perfect. Okay. Now to change the scale of this rotor up to the next level, we're going to actually switch in just a standard connector like so. Wizard's guidance. Am I, am I correctly building Wizard to the code? Yes, yes. It's, it's looking very good. <laughs> right. So we, we're building to the correct building code of the Wizard turret. Let's have a quick look here as we go. So we're just going to connect up both sides so we've got a bit of redundancy as we build. And then, as Wizard said before, we only need a minimum of three. And then we can actually put another connector on the top, like so. This is going to act as a backing for the advanced rotor so you can still pass your ammunition through it. And then we have ourselves the perfect place really to put another connector. And there we go. That is how our turret is going to work. Our turret is going to be mounted then into that section. Ooh, very, very, very nice indeed. Ah. Oh, we've done it. Have we done it the wrong way around? You're supposed to build back into the center. Oh, damn it, yes. Okay, so a little building mistake from Aaron there. I built off to one side. That can go away. Then such a noob. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. The reason we're doing this, <laughs> the reason we're building back over to the center here is for the purpose of keeping all of the center of mass lined up above. So if I then place one of them guys in there, we should have the center of mass directly above each other in the two points, like so. Perfect. Then we can go ahead and build our turret onto the connector like that. It's advised at this point while you're building to lock all of your gyros, uh, not the gyros, sorry, the uh, rotors. Because yes. as you add things, the rotors are going to want to move, and that's a bad thing. So when we've got this now, we can actually reference over to Wizard's turret, and we can have a look at this inside here, and just have a quick reference how he's protected the insides. He's built this armoured core around the actual shaft, and the reason for this is if we just look here, if this point gets destroyed, the whole top half of the turret's going to come off like that. I actually saw that in one of your early turret designs. Someone severed it like that, and the top fell off. Now, the other weaknesses in this design are, of course, the rotor at the base there that could be destroyed. If that happens, then your turret's pretty much dead. But you want to protect that with some nice armor, and it's not too hard to do if you're smart about it. So now that we're taking a look at the final turret design. Now, this took Wizard about a month to build. It's got the combination of all three, the armor, the plumbing, and the firepower. But the, one, the bit I really wanted to show you was this grill up here at the front. Now, this was designed by Shuck, and he relayed the information over to you, Wizard. Tell us a little bit about it. What, what does it do? Uh, well, Shuck just... Shuck figured it out. Um, he was able to create something similar to what we've got here. And uh, it showed me that you could actually fire ammunition through this grill without the grill taking damage, which mm -hmm. meant it was a lot harder to hit the guns behind it. So it's effectively shielding for when we're in mid-battle. So perfect. So it was implemented and it worked really well. And it's not come off and it's done its job brilliant. So you can see from the angles as I pan across this, from angles where the turrets would usually be able to be hit, the shielding's protecting them, and it's really just giving them limited exposure while the Gatling gun turret can actually shoot forward. So I'm going to jump in the turret now. 
we've got ourselves a remote control block set up and as I gain access to this and move it around you can see how the Gatling gun turrets can just shoot through it causing no damage at all to the grill. Now if I get my camera and we move it into position, we move it a little bit further back, we're going to actually target Wizard Rover over here. We're going to use some of this high powered Gatling gun fire and we can see just how quickly this can shred through design with this amount of Gatling gun turrets. If I actually stop firing, you can see the traces there. This was quite renowned on the Mad Max server. It was a scary sight to see. But that is pretty much how you build yourself an effective turret. These, of course, can be converted into all sorts of things, can't they? Was it spaceships, rovers, whatever yeah. you can stick a turret on, really, can't you? So to bring this one to a conclusion, I hope that we've helped you design a turret that is effective in combat. We've shown you how to plumb it. We've showed you how to armor the thing, and we've also shown it how not to be a limp. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Stop, stop building turrets that wiggle to the ground, right? I'm sick of cleaning them up and clan gates them as well, right? Don't try overriding things with dodgy gyroscope combinations. Just balance your turret correctly. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.